Hello everybody, welcome back to another reading. Today we're taking a look at the case of 17-year-old Amy Billings, sometimes also spelled as Billings, who disappeared on March 5th of 1974. She had come home from school for lunch that day and she called her father asking if he, she could borrow some money. And in order to collect that, she wanted to hitchhike over to his office. Uh, she unfortunately never arrived at the office. And all sorts of theories have been floated about this case, that she may have been abducted by an outlaw biker gang, or a custom supervisor named Henry Johnson Blair, also known as Hank. Those two are fairly high on the suspect list. One of the things they found of Amy's was her camera, and on the camera was at least one picture of a white van, which was very similar to a white van that Hank used to own. And she also wrote in her diary that a man named Hank was planning on taking her to South America, which is one of the places that Hank used to have to travel for work. And uh, another piece of evidence against him, rather large piece of evidence, is that he kept calling her mother, her mother Susan, talking about all the terrible things that he was doing to her daughter every night. And this lasted, I believe, about 20 years when they finally figured out who it was because he used to use pay phones to do that and he couldn't trace those but then one day he actually used a mobile phone to do that and then they were able to catch him pretty quickly they couldn't actually find anything like further evidence no idea whether amy had ever been in his possession or not but he was sent to jail for two years for harassing her over the phone which is still a very light punishment for somebody who's been doing that for 20 years uh, harassing somebody who was just trying to find her daughter and telling them all sorts of terrible things so it's not a great human being even if he didn't kidnap Amy Billings. So on uh, the outlaw biker gang uh, they came into view pretty quickly from the start and after a while a biker named David started calling her mother as well saying that uh, he had actually seen her, he had owned her at some point, because apparently she was being sold off from biker to biker, according to David. And he gave her a couple different locations where she could go look, which she actually did do. She went all over the place, she did everything that she possibly could. She went to all the different biker gangs, tattoo parters, anywhere she could think of to go. So she had quite a lot of guts to walk into these places to ask questions about things that maybe... Uh, were very sensitive to some of the patrons in those locations. A lot of the sightings that the biker David and I believe other people that uh, Susan talked to uh, did seem to point towards Amy. For instance, one of them, uh, I believe she talked to a cashier at some point and the cashier said that she had actually um, been spotted with a couple of bikers and that the girl that the cashier saw had bought a vegetarian soup, which was a pretty strong hint because Amy was vegetarian. And a lot of other people describe the girl that they saw as kind of shy and some of them even said mute and that also matched Amy because she was not very loudly spoken. Aside of course from matching the descriptions that were given and the picture that she brought with her to show to everybody whom she was talking to. She never gave up and uh, she sadly passed away at age 80 in 2005 not having found her daughter. Her brother Josh continues to look to this day. So somebody asked me to do a reading on her. Now the person who asked me did spell in the name with Billings with an N, but I couldn't find anybody other than that name. So I'm assuming they meant Amy Billy. Uh, anyway, using the tarot for that, obviously uh, we're starting off with uh, the uh, Muse deck, which is already on the table right here with the uh, very imaginative imagery. A fairly lighthearted deck, I would say for something like this, or pretty much most of my cases. But for whatever reason, this deck kept calling to me and I think I need to use it. And for any further questions, moving on to the Deviant Moon Tarot, which is this one. And this one is considerably darker and more twisted. Like so. So it's kind of like dark and light here in one reading. So we'll have to see how that works out. Anyway, I'm just going to start shuffling the cards. As soon as we have enough cards on the table, we're going to stop and take a look. So without much further ado, let's get started.
Okay, let's take a look what we've got here. We're starting off in the top left with the Awakening, which I believe is Judgment, followed by the Page of Inspiration, which is the Page of Wands, so far upright. Then we have the Eight of Inspiration, so that is uh, Eight of Wands, also upright. So I think this is just before the actual kidnapping takes place. So we see judgment, which I would normally say as somebody being very careful or at least, um, yeah, making sure to keep in mind all the bad things that could happen. She was choosing to hitchhike, which is not the best choice in any era, really. But we see here also to hear the page of inspiration, which is the page of wands, which is somebody who normally acts very quickly. So she may have had a bit of a balance uh, between maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should just grab a bus if there is one. Maybe I should uh, call a taxi. Maybe I should ask my mom to drive or something if she had a car. Or maybe I can ask somebody else. On the other hand, I really need to get there fast because she was on lunch break, I believe, so maybe she had to go back to school. I'm not entirely sure about that. Either way, we see that she had a bit of a balance issue between those two. On the one hand, she wanted to be careful, and on the other hand, she wanted to get there fast. And we do see some uh, movement here with the Eight of Wands over there. We can actually see them moving very quickly. And I think this is the point where she actually gets picked up by somebody or something. And this is also uh, it's of inspiration, Eight of Wands, also a little bit of communication card, like she may have tried to call somebody, maybe, or thought to call somebody. I see this more as she was picked up by somebody and while she was in transit, she thought, hmm, maybe I should send a quick message. Maybe she saw a payphone and thought, hmm, I actually need to maybe call and let them know about this or something, that I'm on my way, that I'm fine, or something along those lines. But the next card that we see over there is the tower, which is definitely a sudden change of plan, something shocking happening, followed by temperance and the seven of materials, which I believe is the seven of pentacles. Yes, it is. So the tower, something sudden happens, but we have temperance right after that. So I think the tower is the exact moment where she was aware that the person who was transporting her was not well-intentioned, but temperance is showing that she tried to play it off or try to be uh, well balanced and try to not upset her kidnapper in the hopes that she would eventually uh, be let go, which is the Seven of Pentacles here. Seven of Pentacles normally seeing things um, ripening on the vine, things that you have caused yourself. It could be that she uh, thought, oh yeah, this is the result, this is why. Uh, or this is because I was so careless and, and now I have to deal with it somehow. Maybe that's where the temperance came in. Like, I have to deal with this myself because I got myself in this situation. So she has this shock with the tower and then she's like, okay, where am I now? Let me just strike a balance. Let me just uh, work my way through this, deal with it because it's all my fault. That type of thing I should have known better. I think is what the Seven of Pentacles in particular is trying to say. There we go. Right, so next row we have the Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Materials. We have the Ten of Cups in reverse, and we have the Three of Swords in reverse. So the Queen of Pentacles is a very practical person, and I think she uh, continued the, uh, the top three cards there that attitude by just being very practical and just trying to make sure that the best uh, possible happens for her and that means cooperating. Well, I don't know why I said it like that, but okay, cooperating. Uh, Ten of Cups, normally feeling really good, but in this case the opposite obviously because it's in reverse, so she's not feeling very good about it, but she's just sticking with it because she is uh, trying to be as practical as possible. Three of Swords, or Voices in this case, though, is usually uh, somebody getting in the way. It could mean that she was initially trying to uh, appease a single person, the kidnapper, and then the Three of Swords over here shows that it's actually a situation with multiple people involved, and she may not like the other people that she is... Uh, perhaps hand it off to. This may point toward the scenario of bikers selling her on to other bikers and that type of thing. Like she may have initially tried to focus on one person and then it ended up being 
multiple that meant that she had to change her tactics depending on who she was with i think she chose the route of the caretaker because we have the empress right here with the eight of cups right next to that and the six of pentacles in reverse so i'm thinking that no matter who she was with she tried to be as kind and gentle toward them as possible so that she would have the best possible treatment from them. She does, however, feel like she needs to walk away from uh, something uh, in like inward in order to be able to achieve this. Uh, also feels like she just couldn't leave. She didn't have the freedom to walk away because normally the Eight of Cups is like walking away from certain situations emotionally, uh, perhaps leaving stuff behind, but she couldn't do that necessarily. So there is also a piling up, I believe, of negative emotions happening here that she could not shake. And then we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. Normally that would be a charity card, but it's in reverse. So basically this is her again trying her best to take care of other people around her but also to take care of herself of course by keeping them happy uh getting emotionally damaged and feeling like nobody's really on her side nobody's really cutting her any slack because of the six of pentacles in reverse so no charity given as much as she tries to be charitable and kind herself Okay, so I feel like this situation probably lasted for some time. This looks, particularly the bottom row, is just like how she is trying to deal with her situation. I think this is across multiple people, which the Three of Swords is pointing towards. Let's see what we can find, uh, what happens next. Like, do we have other people coming in? What changed? Okay, we have the King of Cups in reverse with another card underneath. Three cards, okay. We have the King of Cups, we have the Knight of Pentacles and the Magician in reverse, but we also have the Five of Pentacles. All five of these, or four rather, came out. So, King of Cups I think is one of the people whom she is now involved with because of this whole situation and we have the Knight of Pentacles next to that. King of Cups is somebody who's very manipulative and the Knight of Pentacles I think may be representing her or the attitude of the King of Cups because the King of Cups is very manipulative like I said like he manipulates people's emotions and stuff like that to his own advancement the knight of pentacles being in reverse means that they are working slow and steadily on something but it's not the right thing which could point towards amy trying her tactics again on this person and still not really getting anywhere with this one and then we have the magician who is in reverse and that means that they also cannot get anything to work or they're working on things that are not good maybe this knight of pentacles and the magician in reverse combo is the king of cups over here working against her or it's amy trying things and just failing or just a combination of both could both be happening at the same time like he's trying to do his thing she's trying to do her thing and it's not really working out for her we have the five of pentacles in reverse uh five of pentacles is normally like a bit of a bankruptcy type thing emotional uh, resources could just mean that she is running out of fumes so to speak because of course this is a long-term process at this point and she is trying her best to keep her head above water but it's not really working out very well as you can see so she may be feeling uh the buildup of all the negativity and the loss of energy as a result of that but since it's in reverse, I think this is still her trying to maintain a pleasant outer uh, exterior to try and keep everybody calm and happy and all that with her presence. Because I usually see that as like an internal struggle when it's in reverse. Not always, but in this case in particular, I think so. So she may also try to hide her activities from them with the Magician in reverse. Oh whole bunch of cards here all right three cups and then we have the two of wands we have the chariot in reverse and the world okay so that's interesting 
So the Three of Cups, as you can see, is usually a harmony card, people partying, etc. like that. But in this deck, there is the fish at the bottom that's trying to eat all three of them at the same time. I think this is, once again, pointing towards the fact that she's trying to be what they want her to be and at the same time she feels like she's extremely trapped so while she's pretending that everything's fine and she doesn't uh try to attract any sort of attention that they don't need to worry about her um they are definitely feeling the trap over here the two of wands is somebody who likes to at least make plans to move do things uh go to different locations find other things uh, dig for them actually as you can see he's got these two wands over here she's using to dig up i think onions they look like onions anyway so he's trying to dig up things and perhaps looking for a new location to find uh what it is that they need she may be trying to find ways to get back to where she comes from or at least someplace safe uh, the chariot in reverse though is showing that that is not exactly working and the chariot reminds me a lot of the knight of pentacles in the background also the way that they are both seemingly part of this large contraption neither of them is doing very much good and the chariot in reverse is also pointing towards the fact that the uh, the motion that she was hoping for the uh, direction she was hoping to be able to head into it was being frustrated it did not work out and then we have the world here, which I normally take as somebody spotting me. So it could be that people were starting to become aware that other people were looking for her. And that may be why the chariot slowed down. Like, oh, uh, we see that there is some motion here. There's some plans here. Could also mean that there were some other people making plans to go see her. And that's why things slowed down because the world became aware of her and that also meant that the people that she uh, was with would be in the eye of the world before long and the person over there in the middle over there uh, does appear to be looking like they want to flee they are there's some type of mermaid but they're leaving the water behind which is very interesting also the boat in the background and they appear to be trying to run even though they don't have any feet but still they appear to be trying to get out of dodge so to speak so i think maybe at this point uh her plan slowed down because people were becoming aware that uh people were looking for amy and perhaps they decided to leave town because of it So what happens next? Whoop. Next there's a card that fell to the floor. Two of them. Okay, we have the moon and we have death. Okay, so uh, this sounds very bad and I think that is exactly what uh, we're looking at. So over here we have people panicking that people are starting to notice her, starting to look for her, people are asking around about her. And then we have the moon, which is a little bit about secrets, and we have death over there on the right. So I think people panicked, whoever was in control of Amy at that time, whoever, maybe one person, maybe several, were deciding to, uh, first of all, play a charade. We can see those two people dancing uh, connected to the strings, so they're like putting on a show, pretending that things are not what they uh, are lying in other words while also ending the era and possibly also ending her life with the death card over there on the right so it's like on the front end you got this whole show being put on with the moon card and in the background they're taking care of their problems so that they can avoid issues later down the line That seems pretty clear, but let's try to get another couple of cards, maybe. Let's see if we can get any. Are we ever going to find anything of Amy? Because we haven't found anything of her yet. Okay, we got. Oh, that's quite a bunch of cards, actually. Okay. Final few cards, then. Are we going to find Amy? We have here the Ace of Wands in reverse. We have the Nine of Wands, and that is upright. We have the Hangman in reverse. There are three of wands and the page of cups in reverse. Okay, so there's a lot of negative, small emotional surprises that are happening. 
Uh, we see the Ace of Wands in reverse, so things are being done which are not useful in a way, so maybe they're barking up the wrong tree. Uh, they're also getting very tired of this case, whomever is looking to solve it is uh, wearing down. Also, it has been a long time. It's been more than 30 years uh, since she was kidnapped, and I think the uh, wear is starting to show. They need a new perspective because the hangman is upside down. Like after all this time, we're seeing the watch over here hanging from the shoe. Uh, they uh, probably are still uh, like stuck looking in a particular direction. After a while, you tend to uh, like in a certain investigation has been out there for some time. You tend to be staring at the same thing over and over again because you're just so used to going down certain narratives. I think this uh, hangman is trying to say to maybe look at the case with fresh eyes. Uh, maybe make some new travel plans. It's not quite ready to move yet, or they're not quite ready to move yet, because as you can see, the Three of Wands is normally a card for like making plans to go travel, but they're still growing, these ones. They're not mature yet, so it's not yet time to go. And the moon is also very prominent in this card. Now, I know that this is a, a deck all about the moon, but this one is very prominent in the sense that it's still perhaps time to unveil a secret or two before they can actually move. And then the Page of Cups, like I said, is a small negative emotional surprises. It could be that they still have a lot of things to dig through, a lot of things to uh, go through before they actually get to any sort of resolution for this case. So it looks like we're not going to see a uh, conclusion anytime soon. Although there have been a lot more things revealed lately for other cases as well, so who knows, we might suddenly get a growth spurt here with these three wands and then suddenly we have her location or something along those lines. I would not put that past this current, I believe, a set of new moons that we have. I hope so, but it looks as though the people who are currently looking into the case are still staring at things that are no longer relevant and they need to do different things and look at things differently. Which could be hard to do because apparently they're very exhausted here with the Nine of Wands, which is not surprising. So that is what I'm seeing for Amy Billing. Hope you found that interesting. Make sure to leave a like and a comment. That really helps the channel along. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Hope to see you in another video. And bye-bye for now.